Uh, good morning. Uh, so, we will continue our weak formulation. Uh, last uh, class, we have studied the solubility of L naught of u equal to f. What is L naught? L naught is the operator, elliptic operator with the lower order term and that too in a, uh, conservation d form. Okay, a j of x d j this is your operator L and uh, with the Dirichlet boundary condition this is what we have done and then you uh, proved the this transformed into this form a u v equal to f v where you are looking for u in h 1 naught this we have already done and this happens this equality for all v in v v in h 1 naught and then you prove that, that there exists a unique solution u in h 1 naught and which also satisfies uh, the regularity the estimate u in h 1 naught is less than or equal to constant norm in f in L 2 of omega ok and this is what we have done. In particular you can apply for that. So, let me to make you familiar in particular particular if L naught is equal to uh, minus Laplacian then you have this problem the even minus Laplacian u equal to f in omega and u equal to 0. So, this is a particular case on the omega and its weak formulation is weak formulation and because this is the operator I will be studying again and again and hence I am writing it once more. Formulation is integral of grade u grade v equal to integral of f v for all v in v. No sorry not for all in v in v for all v in h 1 naught and you are looking for a solution u in h 1. So, and this has a unique solution u in h 1 naught such that uh, uh, norm of u at uh, thing is. But just I want to recall which I have presented once again. So, how do you get back? So, this is called the this is the strong form, this is the weak form. So, uh, the uh, if u is classical. this you should always check it whenever you create a weak formulation the classical solution should be a weak solution and if there is a weak solution and the width and the u satisfies the regularity uh, uh, additional regularity or uh, smoothness and then you also should get, get back your equation then only you can say that your weak formulation is a good weak formulation corresponding to your PDE. So, if u is classical implies that is uh, uh, u satisfies one implies u is weak is a weak solution this I remarked but that is important. Conversely so assume so let us see this is what you have to assume to that means that u is a weak solution and you assume the sum regularity you can assume c 2 of omega bar, but it is enough to even to assume. So, you start with u is in h 2 of omega this is an additional smoothness then that implies then uh, this 2 can be uh, 2 uh, can be integrated by parts again you can apply integration by parts to get it integral of minus Laplacian of u f over v is equal to 0. If u is in h 2 this will become an L 2 function you see and this is true for all v in h 1 not of omega in particular this is in particular this also implies this minus Laplacian of u f if you assume f is in L 2 this is whole thing is in L 2 and hence uh, this is true for all v in in particular this is true for all v in d omega 
because d omega is a subspace of uh, h1 of omega and uh, since d omega is also dense in l2 and this equality is also true uh, in l2 sense so you get for all v in l2 this is an important thing so therefore this equation is true in l2 sense that implies minus laplace n of u equal to f first you get this is in distribution that is the meaning of that this is also you get minus laplace n of u equal to f in l2 so to understand various meaning minus laplace n of u plus f in l2 means for all test functions the uh, value is zero but this is l2 the l2 integral is zero since this is l2 u implies minus laplace n u of u plus f is in almost everywhere further if u is in c2 of omega bar you get then this and f is in c omega c omega and so let me go So, what is it? Let me read once more, write it further. These things you have to check it all the time. Further, if u is in C2 of omega bar and f is in C omega implies minus Laplace n of u minus f equal to 0 point wise. You see point wise and u equal to 0 on d omega point wise implies u is classical. So, this is what I am trying to say that you have to prove. So, whenever you give a weak formulation not only that you have to check that u is classical then implies u is weak. You also have to check the converse part of it if u is weak and u satisfies the smoothness condition then you can get back your uh, equation as well as the boundary condition depending on the amount of smoothness available to it. And here also you will get your u in h 1 of omega or h 1 naught of omega less than or equal to constant into norm f in L 2. One more last remark regarding these thing. In fact, you can it is in, in fact it is enough to take enough to take enough to take f is in h minus 1 of omega ok. In this case integral f v to be replaced by by f e, which is a duality bracket this v is in h 1 naught and this is in h minus 1 of omega. So, we may normally write this also this way, but you have to be take it with a pinch of salt in the sense that if f is in h minus 1 of omega this is the meaning of it and you can have the same lax milligram lemma and this is also true for h uh, uh, your l naught operator. Okay, there is no difference. So, this you will get it as constant into norm f in h minus 1 of omega. You see, you get that. Now, with this, we will go to uh, uh, the inhomogeneous situation, non homogeneous case. We will do quickly that non homogeneous case. So, what is your equation? You have minus Laplace n of u equal to f in omega and u equal to g on d omega you see. Now, you cannot work with h 1 of omega immediately. So, what do you do? You recall the trace theorem recall trace theorem. So, it is important to understand now 
trace theorem which you have studied last uh, uh, the part 1 of this course as well as we recall in this course as well and what is a Ries theorem. So, before that let, uh, let me tell you. So, if you are looking for solution if we look for u in h 1 naught of omega h 1 of omega you cannot look u in h 1 naught of omega. If u is h 1 of omega then you are you restrict by trace theorem you restricted to d omega is in h half of d omega. So, you see you know that. So, we need to assume this forces to assume we need to assume g which is the boundary value in h half of gamma, gamma or d omega and uh, f for f we assume either it is in L 2 or in h minus 1 of omega you see. Now, by trace theorem trace implies. So, you have to solve this problem with these two assumptions uh, g in h half and f is in L 2 of omega. So, trace implies there exists u tilde that means, you have a mapping from h 1 of omega to L 2 gamma naught trace u tilde in h 1 of omega such that. So, you are first looking for a function uh, which is uh, has the trace value u tilde restricted to d omega is equal to g and you will also get an estimate such that norm of u tilde in h 1 of omega less than or equal to uh, norm of g in h half. So, such kind of thing these are all part of your uh, trace theorem. So, you can choose such a function. So, what you are looking for? So, what you have to do is that so you have a function already u tilde. So, what you are looking for a set. So, you are looking for not in h 1 of omega. So, h 1 not of omega. So, you are looking for a solution v in h 1 of omega such that you are v minus u tilde is in h 1 naught of omega because you that means your u tilde has the trace value g and hence v also has the trace value. So, looking for the case set basically you are looking for the boundary values uh, uh, g. So, this is a closed convex set closed convex set. Okay. So, this is a small exercise which you can do it exercise. So, you uh, verify that one. So, now I can uh, look for a solution. So, uh, the so what is the weak formulation? You derive the weak formulation. So, I am going to leave so many exercises because it is basically an application of integration by parts. Take a test function and you there and then integrate by parts. So, what is the weak formulation? So, I call this to be 1 formulation. So, do this as a small exercise all that you derive I do not want to keep on deriving. So, you are looking for a u in k, but you are uh, uh, so, uh, grade u and grade v is equal to integral of f v if f is otherwise the duality omega and this happen for all v in h 1 naught of omega. Of course, you cannot apply the lax in milligram directly because the spaces which we are considering are different. Uh, Stambach here you cannot do that immediately, but this is a weak formulation. So, uh, prove that this is a uh, is indeed a genuine weak formulation. Okay. So, the exercise is 1 implies 2 means if u is a weak solution a uh, strong solution satisfies one point wise then you can get a solution uh, is a u is a weak solution and 2 that means you have a weak solution plus your u plus the smoothness smooth 
implies these are all trivial exactly what we have done. Sometimes it is not trivial you can see when you study here uh, the uh, Stokes equation etcetera things would not be that trivial ok. So, you may have the difficulty the problem is that immediately you cannot apply the, uh, the lax milgram lemma. So, how do you solve it now uh, proof of existence uniqueness ok existence uniqueness and uh, continuity estimate continuity. What do you look for the step is again in two steps uh, we will do it in uh, thing this is a small trick look for because you already got the boundary condition g. So, you look for your u is of the form u tilde plus w ok and then 2 can be written as now u tilde is known integral of so find w so you want w in now in h 1 naught because u tilde already satisfies your boundary condition. So, w should be satisfying the 0 boundary condition such that you are uh, you apply the uh, 2 2 you are applying it is you can first apply grade w grade v this is over omega and this is equal to integral of f e which is for all v in h 1 naught of omega and then you will have your minus by integral of grade u tilde grade v because u tilde is known is the thing and this is for all v in h 1 naught. Now, you see this together uh, is a linear form non linear form. So, again you can apply lax milgram apply lax milgram to get w in h 1 naught and uh, the w now can be estimated as norm of w in h 1 naught is less than or equal to constant into norm of f in L 2 plus norm of gradient of u tilde in L 2. Okay. Of course, if f is in h minus 1 it will be h minus 1 and but gradient of uh, u tilde is less than or equal to g in h half. So, you see so and you uh, and this is norm in f tilde e plus norm in h half. Of course, the uh, to get unique w in, but this does not imply does not imply uniqueness of u given u tilde because does not imply uniqueness of u because w is unique for a given u tilde, but the u tilde there will be many u tildes. So, uniqueness is trivial however, uniqueness if this is you take a, so you take u uh, two solutions u 1 and u 2 solutions then u equal to u 1 minus v 2 is also a solution you can see that the zero solution uh, satisfies this is easy now satisfies uh, uh, min uh, uh, minus Laplacian u 1 equal to this is in h 1 naught you can see that and uh, you get integral of grade u grade v because it is the same f it satisfies the same f you get your omega this is equal to 0 for all v in h 1 naught that is a standard way of proving uniqueness and taking uh, take v equal to u v equal to u implies grade u square equal to 0 omega that implies uh, u equal to 0. Uh, almost u equal to constant 
ok and that implies uh, in the sense of since u is in h 1 naught the boundary values are 0. So, you have basically u equal to 0 everything in the sense of trees. So, you have the uniqueness for a non homogeneous problem and you also have this estimate that is more important this is also this is a continuity estimate. So, you see so you have your continuity estimate. But try to work it out in, in and such a concept proving the when you are have a PDE and whatever form you give it uh, when you are uh, uh, proving existence give a formulation and prove existence uniqueness and regularity is called the well postness of the problem well postness well postness of the and this is called Hadamard well postness ok. Now, some few immediate things you can uh, do you can uh, consider slightly more general immediately for example, can consider can consider L naught of u you can add a first order term, but then there is some problem equal to f in omega with u equal to 0 on d omega and the assumption is of course, a naught we assume l infinity and we also assume a naught of x non negative. So, the exercise is that uh, trivial give weak formulation. So, no problem you can add one more term and give weak formulation and I said uh, I am just taking through the equivalence in the sense that strong solution is a weak solution and weak solution together with the thing uh, is a strong solution. You should always do that even if it is to you prove the equivalence that is what I meant by equivalence otherwise weak solution need not be a strong solution and then estimate Esti existence uniqueness and estimate well, uh, well postness prove the well postness means existence uniqueness and thing that is trivial ok. And uh, uh, if so, because what you can do that is actually you can get this operator L naught plus A naught is elliptic you can prove that that is what you want to prove it if you give a weak formulation and that. Of course, L naught V ellipticity is given, but the weak formulation corresponding to this one you have to prove that it is elliptic that is what you can. If A i j if A i j is symmetric A i j is symmetric this also you know then uh, solution is characterized by then u is characterized by as we have seen x at a uh, u in h 1 naught and j u equal to minimum of j v v in h 1 naught and what is your j v? j v is equal to half of a i j d v by d x j d v by d x i exactly you will get uh, uh, one more term integral of half of a naught of x v v square minus integral of f v this is for all v in h 1 naught of omega but when you i will uh, have some interesting remarks later so we want to general case general case in divergence form divergence
we do not even assume that A naught is non-negative now. So, what is your operator? L of u is equal to minus d i of a j of x b j of u uh, plus uh, the summation is there all the time I am telling a i of x d i of u plus a naught of u x u equal to f with u equal to 0 on the boundary. So, this is your L ok this is in omega. So, how do you you can still give the weak formulation. So, you assume of course a i j assume conditions on a i j as usual boundedness and ellipticity conditions on a i j I do not keep on repeating ok as above and you also assume if you want a i to be say c 1 of omega bar a naught is in uh, 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 is c omega bar all that. you may not require such strong thing maybe it is enough l infinity all that assumption you may not require. So, you will be using l infinity conditions. Sir. So, I want to give a weak formulation. So, derive the weak formulation. So, I will leave, uh, leave it to you. These are all small small exercises in the process of it is an exercise not that non trivial exercises. It is an exercise to learn your subject. Anyway, you have to read and read what I write. So, it is better that uh, you do it weak formulation. Weak formulation is uh, find u in again h 1 naught such that your a u v is equal to f a you can write down f a f a can write either this form or integral form depending on where it is available. But what is your a u v? a u v in this case integral of a i j of x d j of v u d i of v plus integral of a i of x d i of u v plus integral of a naught of x uh, u v this is what you are a u v ok. The problem is that even if we assume even if this L naught A i j is elliptic elliptic A need not be elliptic A need not be H 1 not elliptic ok. That is what in this uh, uh, something a particular case I told you just now you see in this case when you add a non negative term here first order term you get ellipticity, but in this case we are not even assuming that ok. I have something to do, but AI does not by still A not is the troubling term for getting existence ok. So, we will see that ok. So, uh, A need not be elliptic ok, we already mentioned that A need not be, but in some cases if A is elliptic then that implies there exists unique solution by lax milgram this you can see ok assume that a is elliptic and then show that there exists a, a unique solution satisfying the estimate satisfying the standard estimate satisfying the similar estimate ok well postness basically 
this is an exercise you can do that trivial you are just uh, verifying ellipticity is given. So, basically there is nothing to do that. Now, the problem actually you are going to state a, a general theorem uh, probably uh, maybe I will just state the theorem. So, uh, this is basically an application of application of application of uh, Fradom alternative. We are going to do, we already seen the Fradom alternative in the Babuska Brzee thing Fradom alternative. Native. So, let me state the theorem. Uh, okay. So, let me I have to write uh, before that right how do you do, do to understand the solvability. So, again on the side let me recall. So, this is about the compact operator right which we have applied operator. So, if you want to solve your equation T x minus lambda x equal to f you have to understand the equation the solubility of the homogeneous equation t star of x uh, minus t star of y minus lambda y equal to 0. And what is this compact operator theory it tells you that uh, even though the you are working in an infinite dimensional space this is a uh, finite dimensional kernel of t star minus lambda i is finite. That means, uh, the homogeneous equation is finite dimensional and then the solubility of this one that this f has to be in the orthogonal complement of the, the uh, uh, of the uh, kernel space. This is what we have applied and this is precisely your finite dimensional situation regarding the solubility of A x equal to B. If A is invertible uh, then uh, it is uniquely solvable. If A is not invertible you have to have this B in the range of the A star kernel of that one that is what you will be doing it. So, this we will do this application and uh, for the general equation we put it in this form and you uh, state the results. Since the time is up, I uh, will continue this theorem and give the proof of that because it is a beautiful application of again uh, Fradom alternate. The things uh, one of the important thing you study in functional analysis. Thank you. Thank you very much.